Uh, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Spiffy the Easy Way. Um, I appreciate that it is the last talk of KubeCon, which uh, makes it extra special that you've all turned up. I, I wasn't sure how many to expect, and I'm seeing a lot of faces smiling back at me. That's always lovely. I actually see a lot of faces that I recognize from the conference as well, people that have dropped by the Cert Manager booth. Uh, it was great to see so many of you uh, drop by. Uh, my name's Ash. This is Tim. Uh, we're both software engineers at Venify, which is now a cyber art company. Uh, as, as you may have guessed from the title of this slide, we're here to talk about Spiffy and Cert Manager. So let's jump into that, make sure that we're both on this, we're all on the same page. So this is the slide that we throw on pretty much any talk we do about Cert Manager. Um, an important change to this slide, though, is that it says CNCF graduated now, which is what we announced here in Salt Lake City this year. Um, this is the, the first KubeCon since we hit graduation, and it's a huge milestone for the project. Um, Cert Manager is, we like to say, the easiest way to manage X509 certificates in Kubernetes. Um, being a graduated project is kind of a stamp of approval from the CNTF that we're, we're, we're issuing, issuing those certificates correctly, and that's good. Um, we've got some big numbers, which is also customary for this slide, but we, an important one for me is that we hear maybe 80 to 90% of clusters actually install Cert Manager by default, which is crazy to think about. Um, graduated is actually the same level that Kubernetes itself is at, so, so again, awesome to, to be at that level. Um, it was a long road, and we're, it's, we're really happy to be here. Um, so yeah, we'll obviously be using Cert Manager in this talk and talking about that more, but uh, we're also going to be talking about a different CNCF graduated project, which is Spiffy. Um, so Spiffy, if you're not familiar, is a uh, sort of a specification for uh, identity. Um, specifically, it, it defines a Spiffy ID, which is sort of like an identity for a, a workload or a machine, um, which is a sort of known format that you can parse and then use if you want to. Um, it also defines a wrapper for that identity, which is called an SVID. So uh, your Spiffy identity is wrapped inside an SVID, and that SVID can be of two different types. It's, there's X509, which is the same format that Cert Manager uses to issue certs for your website, say, and JWT, or JOT, uh, which is the same format that causes numerous security issues around the world when people send them and don't realize that they shouldn't. But uh, both of those are supported by Spiffy, and uh, it also defines, importantly, a, a workload API. The workload API is so that wherever your uh, workload is running, be that a GitHub action or a Kubernetes pod or a VM or whatever. Um, all your application needs to know is how to talk to the workload API, and then it will get back a identity that it can use to authenticate to other services. Um, Spiffy is, is cool, uh, if I do say so myself, and um, it's pretty widely supported if you consider that like, anything that can accept JWTs or X509 certs can kind of support Spiffy. That doesn't mean there's going to be a rich integration, but it does mean that there is some level of support. Like uh, MySQL, for example, doesn't necessarily automatically support Spiffy, but it can accept X509 certs, so it's kind of part of the way there. That said, a lot of products and uh, services do have built-in support for Spiffy in, in, in one way or another. Um, I've got some logos here, but there, there are plenty of other things. Uh, a big one to highlight is uh, the cloud providers. Um, you can actually use this stuff with AWS, GCP, and Azure. And yes, that is foreshadowing for the demo later. Um, so what are we trying to do? Like when, when we say Spiffy the easy way, what are we trying to do? Well, Spire is the reference implementation of Spiffy. It's a, a, a third CNCF graduated project, uh, and it's the thing that people reach for if they think they want to do Spiffy. They want this universal workload identity that lets them uh, uh, sort of have one format that they can share across their infrastructure. The Spire is great, we love Spire. No shade on Spire. Uh, we think it's good to explore alternative implementations as well, though. Um, if nothing else, it helps us learn and see what the pain points are of existing stuff. Maybe we find new uh, ways of doing things. Maybe there's things we can improve. Um, it's always fun to try. Like, that's another thing, right? It's, 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 uh, there's a lot that we can learn by trying. What we'd like to say is that we think specifications are best with multiple implementations. Spire's great. Can we do something similar? Well, let's compare the two. Um, there's, there's something important that stands out immediately, which is that Spire is trying to run on more things than just Kubernetes, and Cert Manager is not trying to do that. Uh, Cert Manager is, is proudly a Kubernetes tool and focused on that. 
So that means that Cert Manager will only run there. Um, but that actually has an important implication for what we're trying to do. Um, to, to set up Spire, you need a database of some kind, be that MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, whatever. Um, that's great, but that is an operational overhead. Um, I don't, I, I'm not confident running databases in production. They're scary and they break. Um, you can pay a cloud provider, but then you've got to pay a cloud provider, you know. It's a lot of overhead that you do have to take on. And it's important to remember as well that part of the aim of Spiffy is, is sort of solving the bottom turtle problem where you're always trying to find another way of uh, authenticating your service, uh, checking your identity, getting your identity, all that stuff. So having to actually have a database that you need to authenticate to is a non-trivial overhead. Um, of course, there is other parts to uh, Spiffy than just that. Um, there's the two SVID formats that we've mentioned, and there is a Spiffy workload API, which Cert Manager doesn't necessarily support any of those. So how are we going to do it? Well, let's explore that. Uh, I'll pass it over to Tim. All right. So let's start with X509. So as you may know, Cert Manager is the tool to get X509 certificates in Kubernetes. So X509 assets surely must also be supported by Cert Manager, right? Well, I'll tell you that later, but first, let's take a look at X509 assets and how we can easily obtain them. Well, the easiest setup to get an X509 asset is a setup where you already have a Spire server running. For example, someone else in your organization set it up for you, you can just use it. Um, how do you use it? Well, you use this thing called Spire Agent. It's actually a CLI called with the same name as the actual Spire agent, so a bit confusing. But this CLI you use to connect to a Spiffy workload API socket, and then you request from that Spiffy workload API socket a X509 certificate. So if you run this command, what you will get is a X509 certificate, a private key, and then you can use that to authenticate to other services, to do all these Spiffy stuff that you want to do. But this is just an X509, right? So maybe there are other ways to obtain such a certificate. Well, if you're familiar with X509, you might know something called OpenSSL. This is an amazing command line tool that doesn't confuse anyone. Um, but yeah, basically here you see this uh, very elegant uh, command where we kind of try to replicate this uh, X509 asset. So what we do, we just request a, or we create a, a asset with the sun URI set to this Spiffy identifier. We also, we sign this certificate using the CA that's part of our uh, Spiffy PKI. And ultimately what we will get is a certificate that's identical to the certificate that we just got using the Spire agent CLI. So, if this is an alternative, well, surely it must be possible to do the same thing using Cert Manager, right? Well, of course you can. Here you have an example of a certificate resource in Cert Manager where we specify the Spiffy identifier as one of the URIs. And we reference in this certificate resource an issuer that's part of your uh, Spiffy PKI. And when you do this, Cert Manager will make sure that in the secret that is specified in this certificate resource, a SFIT X509 is created for you. That's amazing. However, there are, there's even, an even better way to do this with Cert Manager. We have this thing called Cert Manager CSI driver. This is basically a CSI driver that allows you to request certificates and directly put them in a volume available in your pods or in your deployment. And what this does is the CSI driver actually requests a certificate without you even needing a secret in your Kubernetes state. So it directly creates the private key and puts it in a folder that's accessible within the pod. Additionally, it will go through the issuance process and place the certificate that it got um, next to that private key. So that's how to, do, how to request an X509 asset using CSI driver. The only thing that I want to mention here is you still have to specify the URI, um, so the Spiffy URI. This is something that you don't have to do if you're using 
the CSI driver Spiffy variant. This is actually another CSI driver that we developed, and this CSI driver will automatically deduce what the uh, Spiffy URI should look like. It will do that based on the uh, service account that you're using in this pod. So the config is a bit simpler here. Um, there's also some more um, checks that are done in terms of are you allowed to request this S, like this uh, Spiffy identifier. Um, but you don't have the, all the options that you had with the CSI driver. So you see, we can actually match the functionality of Spire when it comes to X509 SFITs, which is pretty amazing, if you ask me. However, one thing that's missing is obtaining GWT SFITs. So as you may know, um, Cert Manager cannot issue GWTs. So for this demo, we actually thought of an alternative solution where we, where we actually try to exchange a X509 SFIT for a JWT SFIT. So we created a token exchange service which allows us to exchange this SFIT. So basically, you get a X509, X509 SFIT through Cert Manager. You authenticate to the token exchange using that X509 SFIT you get back a JWT, and then you can start using that JWT. The reason that you want a JWT is because lots of applications, they don't support X509 authentication. Instead, they only support JWT authentication. Um, they might still support Spiffy, so just only the JWT variant of Spiffy. So if we look into a bit more detail at this token exchange, what you will see is that we have this token endpoint that we can authenticate to using MTLS. We can post to this uh, token endpoint, and what we will get back is a JWT. Now, I'll go over some of the details of this JWT with you, so you fully understand how this mechanism works. So first of all, the issuer value in the JWT is actually unique for the um, X59 trust tree that you're in. I'll explain that in more detail soon. The subject matches the URI that we specified in the X509 certificate, and the audience matches what we actually requested as part of the post request uh, to the token. So the audience can be used to make the JWT unique for the, um, the request that you want to make. And of course, there's also an expiration link to this JWT, such that when, it's, when you um, lose it, you don't have to worry after a while. So, this is an example of two different um, X509 trees, PKI trees. So with Spiffy, all the, the certificates in your tree, they're actually all SFITs. Um, and what we see here is that we mapped these trees to issuer URLs in such a way that all the certificates in the tree, when you send them to the token exchange, they will map to the same um, issuer value. And the way we did that is we used the hash of the root CA certificate. So with this um, issuer value, we can actually start trusting the JWTs that were issued by this, uh, well, by this token exchange. So one challenge here is that you actually have to make sure that this um, endpoint is served over a publicly trusted uh, but with a publicly trusted certificate, we actually created like a publicly available version of this token exchange too to kind of solve this problem. Um, that's kind of still a work in progress. Um, the way this works is in one of the solutions that you want to authenticate to, for example, they can, this can be a public cloud provider. You specify what the issuer URL is that you want to trust. These token uh, these cloud providers will then reach out to the well-known OpenAPI configuration endpoints, which points then to the well-known JWKS endpoints. Well, there can be a different endpoint too, but the endpoints hosting the JWKS. And from there, it will actually load the keys that it will use to verify the JWTs that you sent to these um, cloud platforms in this case. So with all that set up, you can actually use the token, the JWT token that you just got in exchange for your um, X509 SFIT to authenticate to one of these cloud providers. 
And that way we fully support X509 assets and JWT assets uh, with a bit of a hack, but Ash will now show you that we aren't done yet with our hacks. We will have another hack that will allow us to use the Spiffy Workload API too. Yep, um, we're not done with our hacks at all. Um, the Spiffy Workload API is sort of the final piece of the puzzle here. Um, if, if we can do the SVIDs and do the Workload API, we can kind of say that we implement Spiffy and we may be Spiffy compliant. So the Workload API specifies some endpoints for fetching SVIDs, um, both X509 and JLUT, and for fetching uh, trust for those uh, SVIDs, so how a server might be able to trust SVIDs from other workloads within the same sort of trust domain or the same, same area of, uh, of, of operation. Um, so for X509 SVIDs for the workload API, we can actually do that incredibly simply because we just return the cert that we already have. The cert manager issues it, we just return that cert. There's nothing difficult about it at all. Kind of the beauty of this approach with token exchange is that cert manager doesn't need to learn how to issue JWTs or do anything like that. We just use that cert to, to talk to token exchange to authenticate to that service, and it returns back the JWT that we can return in the, in the Spiffy workload API. So we actually kind of get this for free. Like, it's really not that difficult to do. The token exchange is the thing that enables this. Um, I mentioned trust. We do need to handle trust. We can't ignore that in, in practice. And in the demo we're going to show in a bit, we, we are handling trust. We're doing that with Trust Manager, which is a different Cert Manager subproject. We don't have time to go really into the detail of that, but essentially it's just embedding all of the trusted certificates for our trust domain uh, into a config map, and we're mounting that into our pod. So. If you're not running Trust Manager, I think you probably should be. I think it helps a lot with uh, Kubernetes, even if you're not touching Spiffy at all. But we don't have time to go further into that. But yeah, um, the other part is that um, Token Exchange can handle the JWT trust. Since it knows what the issuers for the JWT SVIDs that we're creating, it can also return those, and we can return those through the Spiffy Workload API. So uh, as you'd probably guessed, yes, we can do the Spiffy Workload API as well. And that actually means we can do pretty much everything that's in Spiffy um, in its totality. So uh, let's take a risk and see if we can show this off in a demo. Um, is this legible for people? Is it OK? Uh, try again a little bit bigger, maybe. Um, so first thing that we're going to do is ignore the cluster that I've already set up on, the, on, the, uh, on my laptop here. Um, I'm not going to show I'm not going to show too much about this cluster. Um, that's just because it's basically what you would do if you copy-pasted from the Cert Manager website and set up an initial cluster. It's not that interesting, except that it's also running uh, Token Exchange, which is more interesting. That, what I mean by that is that the CA certificate that we're using to sign our identities here is, is the same kind of private PKI setup that you would use anywhere. It's not really special in any way. It's just fairly standard stuff, and there's not, nothing interesting, interesting about going into it. What is interesting is this demo YAML file that we have, which we're going to take a quick look at. So uh, this is, is just a pod. <laughs> like there's, uh, there's, there's not too much magic going on in here. Um, the first thing I would highlight is this init container. So this is actually a sidecar container, which is a fairly new concept in Kubernetes. If you've not encountered them, it's just an init container that keeps on running. It doesn't stop after it's done. Um, the other key part here is that this, this sidecar container that we're creating, the Spiffy workload container, um, it mounts the uh, certificate that we're generating with Cert Manager, it mounts a trust store that we're generating with Trust Manager, and it mounts this Spiffy socket um, volume that we're using to share between the two containers. Um, it's not particularly complicated, it's just sort of mounting that Cert in and, and providing that Spiffy workload API. We also have this container um, uh, that, is, that we're calling the client workload. We're not very inventive with names. Uh, all this is doing is pretty much going to sleep and it's got a few tools baked into the image. Um, the key about this one is that it doesn't mount the cert manager cert. So we have issued a cert manager cert using CSI driver in this case. You can see it in the middle of the screen there. But the actual workload container we're implementing doesn't need to know about it. Um, in fact, it doesn't know about it. And uh, all it knows about is the Spiffy workload API, which is exposed by this other um, this, this sidecar container that we're running. So um, really, what, that's important because the, this demo container just knows about the Spiffy workload API. So let's take a look inside that pod. We, 
exec into it, and uh, I will show you what's going on under the hood. Okay. Look away. All right, so we'll first show you the init script that we have. And this init script is basically a script that calls the Spire Agent CLI, if you remember from previously. Um, the Spire Agent CLI is now used in a, a, in a different manner because instead of requesting an X509 certificate, we are requesting JWTs. So that's on that line, yes. Um, what we also provide to this command is the audience, which will be unique for each of the cloud providers that we want to authenticate to. Um, lastly, we also provide it with the, uh, the, the socket, the socket that is actually a socket that was created by the sidecar container. Um, so by running this command, we can actually obtain JWTs, right? So if we run it, what will happen is we will send a message over the socket, then the sidecar container will receive the message, and what it will do is it will reach out to the token exchange, and it will exchange the X509 SFIT that it got mounted through its CSI driver. It will actually exchange that through the token exchange for, X, for a JWT SFIT, and that JWT SFIT will actually be returned here um, also to the Spire Agent CLI. So we run this three times. Um, once for gcloud, once for Azure, and once for AWS. Each of them have a different audience, so the GDTs will also be different for each of them. And you see here the issue we also was talking about, so these are actually linked to the, um, to the CA routes that we are using in our CSI driver. Um, so these are also the URLs that I configured already beforehand in the public cloud providers. So these are trusted now. Um, and we will actually try to run, if, it, if everything works, hopefully we'll be able to actually run some um, commands. In this case, we'll be running AWS, the AWS CLI. Um, we'll be fetching an S3 file and returning the contents. So hopefully this works. Let's see if it does. It might take some time here on the Wi-Fi. Um, but basically, we already obtained the GWT. And we are now using that to authenticate to AWS. And as you can see, it worked great. Let's see if the same works for Google. This time a bit faster, maybe. Yes. And we see, indeed, we get this hello uh, message back from the file that we previously uploaded in Google Cloud. And lastly, let's go for the 343. Um, let's go for Azure see if we can fetch the file, and yes, we did. So that's awesome. Now we were able to actually show you that through this mechanism, we were able to authenticate to the three different cloud providers using just a um, cert manager. So uh, please remember, we just had the CSI driver. That's like our source uh, where we started from, and then we exchanged that for a JWT. We used the JWT here to authenticate to the cloud providers, and we were successful in that, um, in this demo. Awesome. Very happy it worked. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, um, it's always a risk with uh, event Wi-Fi. We're doing that kind of thing, but it worked great. So let's recap what happened there. As Tim mentioned, we just mounted one certificate into that pod from CSI driver. That's all we needed. Um, Using the sidecar container that was running the Spiffy Workload API, we were able to fetch a JWT via token exchange um, for each cloud provider that we could then send off to get back our um, login credentials, and in turn then use the CLI commands that were available um, from the major cloud providers. So our application didn't need to know about the X09 cert. Um, it didn't need to know about token exchange at all. It's just the same as any application that would run on Spire today that might use the Spire agent to fetch um, uh, a JWT. So this approach is actually pretty much pluggable into any cluster that runs Cert Manager. I already mentioned that 80 to 90 percent number. Uh, Cert Manager is kind of part of the furniture in a lot of clusters. So this is actually something you can adopt pretty much any time. It just kind of works. We think it's a pretty powerful approach. Um, we think it can scale pretty well because 
the token exchange service is not particularly complicated or hard to run. Uh, and actually, there's, there's a simplicity to it where the main thing that matters here is actually the trust of that uh, X509 trust chain. We're not actually managing a separate trust chain. It's all based on what happens in that X509 chain that we're using. So it kind of expands out nicely from Cert Manager and goes into JLUT without really having to do too much else. I think it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, Cert Manager is a security-focused product, and there's plenty of security to talk about here. And it would be uh, foolish of me to say all this without going a bit into what's happening in terms of trust. So when you're using Spire, uh, the general workflow is that you're going to register the workload that you want for a given Spiffy ID. So you'll say, hey, this, this pod running in Kubernetes is allowed to get this particular Spiffy ID. Uh, we do not have that here. Um, in this demo, we don't have anything checking that at all. Um, CSI driver Spiffy would have enabled that. We use CSI driver for this demo just because it gives us a bit more control to show off what's happening. Um, so you could use CSI dri driver Spiffy and just kind of get that for free, the workload uh, matching stuff. Um, it's also possible to use a different subproject called approver policy to restrict CSI driver. Um, again, I'm, there's not really enough time to go into the details of every cert manager project that we have. But it is possible to do the CSI driver bit securely and have it work um, in, in a way such that you can trust the identities uh, belong to a given pod. Um, in summary of it all, we move the trust from the Spire database to Kubernetes RBAC. So if you're able to issue a certificate using Kubernetes RBAC, you can get the identity that that certificate represents. Um, this is, again, some, like a shortcut that we can take because we only run in Kubernetes and uh, the way that Spire would solve this is by having that state in its database and wherever your workload is running, it needs to talk back to that database. And yeah. Um, the, it, this doesn't remove the need for us to think about trust and how to handle trust, but it does simplify the trust model a fair bit because we don't need separate keys for those JWTs. We just need the keys for the X over nine certs. And then actually the secret that we have in token exchange is what enables the rest of this. Um, that's kind of hidden away as an implementation detail, but you do need to bear in mind that there's a secret there as well. Um, so we're coming towards the end of, of what we have now. There's a big old QR code here for feedback. If anyone's uh, willing to scan that and provide some feedback, we're always happy to hear what we can do better if you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to talk more, uh, we'd be very happy to do so. Um, you can find us uh, in Cert Manager Slack or uh, come talk to us afterwards and we'll give you contact details. There's plenty of ways to get in touch. Uh, we do have uh, plenty of time for questions as well. There's a microphone set up over here. Um, we've got uh, uh, one guy's already stood up, so that's awesome. Please, uh, if, if you've got any questions, please do stand up. And we'd just like to say thank you all for listening. Uh, really appreciate you coming here for the last talk. Uh, we appreciate you choosing Cert Manager for your last talk of KubeCon. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Please. Uh, thank you for our presentation. Uh, do you have any integration with KeyClock or SpiceDB for kind of end-to-end -end comprehensive uh, permission control or back, a back and uh, identity management? Uh, so the question was, do we integrate with KeyClock or SpiceDB in terms of like the permission control side of this? Um, so. I suppose the answer is probably no. We don't directly integrate with those tools, but like, we're not doing anything in this demo or with token exchange that isn't sort of standard Kubernetes stuff. So if, if, if you're using standard Kubernetes tools, they'll integrate just great with whatever you're doing because it's all in Kubernetes, right? Um, we don't have anything explicitly linking to those, but certainly it would be possible to link other things in and, and you know, add some uh, more complex logic to this about controlling the identities and that kind of thing. We don't have anything for this demo, though. Uh, OK. So another question is, uh, this token exchange server, do I need to have it? This is your proprietary, or I can use just Cert Manager and Kubernetes? So it, it, token exchange is, um, uh, is open source. We've open sourced it under the Venify repo, so you can totally check out the code. There's nothing proprietary about it. Um, you do need to run it to be able to get the JWT SVIDs. It, I've actually run a sort of spiffy setup before using only X509 SVIDs because I'm a certificate nerd. Um, and, and that works perfectly well because I didn't need JWTs. But what this enables is for you to expand out and actually support those 
um, WTS bids as well. Just want to note maybe that this token exchange solution that we created is still experimental, so we would like much more feedback before we actually make this into a product of any kind, so of any source. Yeah. Um, I thought the demo was really cool. Can you guys elaborate on the Nick container a little bit? Is that just the fire uh, agency ally inside of a random container, or was there more in that sidecar? So the question was about elaborating on what's in the init container. So uh, the init container was just exposing a little Go program that we wrote that implements the, spy, the Spiffy workload API. So all that was in there was basically that program, and it exposes a Unix domain socket that allows the, uh, the main workload pod to request identities from the Spiffy workload API. So um, there wasn't really anything Spire specific in that. It's just, just that small Go program. And uh, as I said before, like, all that's really doing is returning the X509 insert if you request it, or returning a JWT if you request that. How would we do something similar without your custom Go? So, um, to do something similar, well, first Wait, of all, maybe, let's first uh, repeat the question. So, your your question was how to do something similar with. Well, you wrote custom Go code to to do the critical transaction of exposing the uh, Spiffy workload API. Is there? Could I just run a Spire container as a sidecar and have it expose that? You did the thing over the socket, but do it over localhost instead of socket or some other way. I'm just interesting about how do I do it without rewriting your Go code that isn't part of it? So um, the question is about how to expose this API without the custom code. Yeah. So um, if you're already running Spire, then you wouldn't need any of that anyway, because- I'm it, not running Spire. <laughs> so um, if, you, if you were running Spire, uh, it exposes a Spiffy workload API. That's how, when you're running in that environment, that's how your application gets these SFIDs. So you need something to expose that API. Our code is, is open source, and you can, you can just um, use it directly. Uh, all, this, all the stuff you would need to write your own version of this is also available. The key is that that API doesn't need to differ between different workloads or anything like that. All that API is, is, is providing the server portion of the Spiffy workload API, and your application is the client. So what, what that bit of code actually really is doing is if you already had an application that was using the Spiffy workload API, you could drop it into this new ecosystem with just Cert Manager, the sort of the, the easy way, and you'd be able to go that um, you'd be able to get your identities from the workload API that way. So it's kind of it's just expanding the workload API so it's available in that environment. Okay. And it is open source as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Also in earlier versions of the the demo that we created, we actually didn't have the um, Spiffy workload API implemented yet. So instead what we did is we just before we ran the init script, we actually contacted the token exchange directly and manually exchanged the X509 certificate for a JDT, which isn't that, that much work. It's just sending a curl request, basically. But it's not adhering to the Spiffy standards. Yeah. So that, that works if you're willing to write the custom code. But um, in our case, if you were already using the Spiffy workload API, you, you can sort of lift and shift with no extra effort at all. There's no authentication needed for that. Same goes for like if you are using um, X509 SFITs. It's probably easier to just mount those in the, the file system that, you're, that you have and just use them directly. You don't need the token exchange. You don't need the um, Spiffy workload API. So we kind of we want to show what is possible using these kind of additional tools. Yep. Um, any other questions at all? One. Um, would there be any interest in a uh, cert manager learning how to issue JWTs? Um, it, it, the reason that I ask is that we've had poor experience in the past with uh, sidecars that are on the critical path of authentication or, or certs, um, and adding in an additional token exchange, adding in a sidecar, having to have that potentially fail, have you know uptime concerns, um, all seem not preferable. So, sorry, could you repeat the first bit of that again? Uh, would it like would it be a big lift to uh, add JWT support to Cert Manager? Is is that something that, that you could see on the roadmap at some point? So the question was around adding JWT support directly into Cert Manager. Um, JWTs aren't that complicated to create, so like from a theoretical standpoint, it's not that difficult to do. Um, I 
But as a cert manager maintainer, I'm not sure that we will want to expand the scope of the project to, to do that because we're kind of laser focused on solving what we solve and we don't want to like bundle everything in there. That's kind of why we went with the approach of the token exchange here because it enables us to create a separate thing that doesn't sort of impact the rest of cert manager. Um, so there is, it, 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 you make a good point that actually this does add an extra network call on, on startup, right, for fetching that um, JWT. Kind of the, a nice thing about this approach, though, is that that network call can be entirely in Kubernetes. Like the, the only thing that needs to be public is the discovery endpoints, which the cloud providers need to be able to fetch regularly or, or whatever you're working with. But that network call is actually inside Kubernetes, just like if you're issuing an X509 cert, that stays entirely within Kubernetes as well. So the, this does work pretty well for that. And it is theoretically possible, at least, to add JWT support for cert manager, but that probably ends up being like a JWT manager or something else. Like, different project. Maybe one more thing I would like to add there is if you don't really care about um, assets, um, just, you just want JWTs, you can just use service account tokens. So that's a great way to use or to obtain uh, JWTs in your Kubernetes cluster. The thing is with this solution, um, you're actually linking the JWTs to your, your PKI setup. So it's not limited to just one cluster. You can have a PKI setup that, that um, that contains multiple clusters and that multiple clusters connect into. And then the JDT solution will actually also work for those multiple clusters. So it's kind of the, the universal identity concept kind of applies here too with the JDTs. Yeah, we're, we're using the service accounts today um, and basically doing all the piping directly to the, to the cloud backends. Um, the, but we're, I'm, I'm looking for a way to get to a global issuer effectively. Right. So, but without adding in extra moving parts. <laughs> Well, something that we haven't said yet, which is probably worthwhile to say, is that if you go on certmanager.io and search for contributing, we've got uh, Slack <laughs> channels and regular meetings that uh, are open to join, and, and we're always happy to chat about things. Like, um, I, can't, I honestly can't see us doing JWTs in Cert Manager directly, but I don't see why there couldn't be JWT Manager or something else like that. Uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the next big thing. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? They did give us permission to overrun slightly uh, because it's the last talk of the day. So <laughs> if you've got any burning questions, now's, now's a good time. Is there? Oh, well, never mind then. <laughs> well, uh, that's cool then. In that case, I'm not seeing any questions uh, coming out, so I'll just say again, thank you all so much. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.